Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So, as always, we want to thank everybody that's supporting us over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without the support over at Patreon, and that is exactly, um, you know, part of this whole program is penalizing those that speak up against the, you know, the system because the system is the one with all the monopoly money. Uh, it is monopoly money. It's all just an agreed upon illusion, as we know, and yet it is an agreed upon illusion still. And and Cindy wants to speak here. It's so funny because uh, when you talk about monopoly money and you actually look at the game Monopoly, what happens if you run out of monopoly money? They just state right there. They just make more. <laughs> just get some paper and make more. So again, they're always telling us the truth, right? Yeah. So. Um, I just want to share this with you guys. This is Norman Dodd, and it's on Tax Exempt Foundations Manipulating Politics and Education. In fact, you know, our education system is one that's been fabricated for us, fabricated for us by the, the elites, or what we would call the elites, and the root of that word is E-L, <laughs> and that's very telling. Oh, yes, very, very, very telling. And uh, this is Norman Dodd, who is no longer with us. Um, he exposed a lot. And in fact, several of the videos are down, but this one you can still, and I'll link this as always, you can still listen to it. And, you know, about 50 something minutes. Um, it, it's a good good listen, but I'm going to give you some uh, info from it right here. So Norman Dodd tells how the Rockefeller, Carnegie, Guggenheim, and Ford Foundation set out to control education and rewrite American history in order to merge America into the one world government they could control. Perhaps we are seeing an example of their fruits of their, and this, by the way, is from 2009, uh, history rewrite now that our government and the mainstream media also control claim that President Herbert Hoover didn't do enough to avert the Great Depression. While well, true history says the opposite. Uh, incredible testimony of this great man interviewed by G. Edward Griffin in 1982. So Norman Dodd was born uh, June 29, 1899 and died January 1987. He was a chief investigator in 1953 for U.S. Congressman B. Carol Reese's Special Committee on Tax-Exempt Foundations, commonly referred to as the Reese Committee. And so the story that is, is presented here represents a missing piece in the puzzle of modern history. Without this knowledge, Many contemporary events are simply beyond understanding the major tax-exempt foundations of this land since at least 1945 have been operating to promote a hidden agenda, and the agenda has nothing to do with the surface appearance of charity, good works, or philanthropy. The real objectives include the creation of a worldwide collective estate, um, you know, again, Everything is an illusion, whether we're looking at the illusion, so to speak, of um, BRICS and NATO at this point in time. You know, with the Soviet Union in the past against uh, the United States and all. We go and we find out that in 1908, the Carnegie began operations. And that year, the trustees meeting for the first time raised a specific question, which they discussed through the balance of the year in a very learned fashion. The question is, is there any means known for more, ef more effective than war for assuming you wish to alter the life of an entire people? And they conclude that no more effective means than war is to that end is known so in other words you know wars and by the way you know what what basically came of all this was the first and then the second world wars the wars are the most easy effective means to change a paradigm and to shift things to a new phase uh, so then in 1909 they raised the second question and discussed it namely how do we involve the united states in a war well, I doubt at that time if there was any subject more removed from the thinking of most people in the country 
uh, that is its involvement in a war. There were intermittent shows in the Balkans, but I doubt very much if many people even knew where the Balkans were. Yeah, there was uh, conflicts going on in the Balkans. In fact, you know, again, this is written from one perspective. Uh, this is important to know. Many of us that have done this research understand that the one system that's working has been working effectively for thousands of years. Yet at the same time, within the populations of people that end up moving people up the political um, spectrum, they're always working to control people that could be problems and, and could end up wanting to go against um, what is the system's objective. So it's always about controlling uh, all those people within uh, a country and making sure nobody goes off cue. Like when Cindy is looking at certain leaders, you know, she'll see the Draco that are really close to some, others maybe not as close to, watching, making sure that nobody goes off cue. Um, because we do have free will, even though some have given away in the entirety of the free will to the point where they're just nothing but puppets. But yes, these, these wars did occur even before this, but this is talking about the gaining control completely of the United States in our more modern era since right before World War I and Two. So, you know, it talks about controlling the State Department take over and control the diplomatic machinery of the country and resolve to aim as that as an objective and then of course get people uh, to be for the war and we understand the false flag aspect that's become so prevalent and it's understood that you know there were key bankers there key families that were on board uh, the Titanic when it went down that were against the Federal Reserve coming into being. They didn't want to go along with that idea. So even within um, Illuminati families, or what we can call Illuminati families, sometimes you'll have dissension, and you'll have people that actually have half of a conscience to a degree, um, and uh, for whatever reason could be opposed to what uh, the control system really wants to manifest. And then, you know, off, often they're met with accidents and things. But what's coming about here is how do they change everything in our world? And certainly uh, the, from the period of before the First World War till after the Second World War, there was rapid change. I mean, incredible change. You have the U.S., which... While you can't say, you know, the Spanish-American War began a phase of what could be viewed as expansionism and empire, um, you know, there was conflict with Mexico, too, uh, and, and the U.S. gained uh, territory there, and, you know, the, the U.S. Uh, really did become an empire. It, whether we view it that way or not, it is the reality, but it's the empire that's controlled by the system. And what we had was a little bit more of an isolationist feeling of or mood in the U.S. in most people in that they just wanted to do their thing. They weren't really so concerned with what was happening in other parts of the world. That ends up changing totally by, we're, by the time we're done with uh, the Roosevelt presidencies and World War II. We have a very different system. We also have a very different position in the world as we become the dominant power counterbalanced by the Soviet Union after World War II. This is all part of that plan. And again, the U.S. was just simply being used uh, to become the policing force of the banking cabal. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at this um, and reading this last sentence of the, the paragraph down here, um, you know, when they say they come to the conclusion that to prevent reversion, we must control education in the United States. And, it, and it, these are the people that are in control of our education now. And we can see what's going on in the school system. It's not okay. So these people are very much alive. They're very much in charge. They're very much making, you know, all the calls. And, 
you know, when it comes to our health, the one thing that really, really bothered me is if when it comes to natural remedies, people's biggest complaints is, you know, it's just not working. And, and there's probably several reasons why they're not working. And one of them is the intake of sugar. But the other reason they're probably not working is because they rewrote all of all of the documents that had anything and everything to do with health and healing. They, they just took it out. So unless you can find books that are pre-World War One or pre this time, you're probably not getting the right information and kind of leaving us alone in the dark. So when you want to heal naturally, you have to do all the work on yourself with yourself. It, this is just so wrong. And here it is in black and white. You know, if anyone, you know, ha has anyone who's open minded to understanding what went wrong in our country, this is what went wrong. And we still have a way to go in and fix it. It's not that we can, we don't have to let these people just do whatever they want. There's like this reverse um, ability for us to go in and alter what they are doing if we come in and we do it the right way. If they're going to use these systems, these nonprofits for their own gain, why couldn't people like us with the knowledge and understanding of energy uh, work get in there and do the same thing and and change the way people think and change the way people do things back to a more honest program and then let things um, kind of flow out from there i think it's wrong just to demonize everything because that doesn't leave you the ability to go in and make positive change this guy went in and he made positive change just one guy he <laughs> this is a really big blow to me to the system for what he did and what he documented and the questions that he asked really helps to me. It helps a lot of people understand and now they know the truth and now they know which direction they must go. So they bring in the Rockefeller Foundation uh, to help in this. And again, the Rockefeller Foundation is really the foundation of modern medicine. And everything that you, you see is in the medical texts and medical school is really coming out of them and, and their paradigms. So, you know, they've bought and paid for um, the education of, of those that we look to for answers. If you're looking at the allopathic system, it's, it's been bought and paid for. And again, they, they own the media. So, you know, they, they've got every base covered. So, again, this is why we lean into... Uh, older remedies like qigong like anything that's based on herbalism uh, and finding balance in the body you know look to ayurveda look to five elements system in traditional chinese medicine it's all about um, maintaining some sort of balance and equilibrium which everything that modern medicine does is, is not based on that because modern medicine is a business you know, and that's just the bottom line it's a business and it wants repeat customers in fact it would love customers that are completely reliant on them for their very existence and that's exactly where this is going so it's more than that they've rewritten the history books and so what is our real history, you know, because it is always being revised and rewritten. Um, I will often go on Yandex now, which is a Russian search engine, and I'll look and, and the results that pop up are much different than what comes up on Google, which is always put, pointing me straight towards all the, you know, Rockefellers and all the, you know, obvious uh, things that we would call globalist um, mindset and sources to give their version it's interesting too because you know they do control all of this uh, you know when we really look at it and yet there are remnants of um, Tartary and Tartaria um, that are in evidence in, in many areas of the world specifically over an area that's occupied by Russia right now and it's fascinating to see. So, you know, Guggenheim, the Guggenheim Museum, and the connections, again, come down to the Smithsonian and, you know, the eradication. I mean, we have on record, you know, tens of thousands, if not millions of instances of giant bodies that have been found uh, throughout uh, the ages and tons of them over here in, in North America 
that were again eliminated by the system because you know they were revised and they gave us a history which is a fabrication and, and that's what a lot of people are awakening to how deep is this fabrication is is the question and so again they they control us totally through what people are are raised with when we look at uh, the fact that more people are homeschooling that's wonderful but then at the same time according to state laws you have to teach certain things which are again uh, facts that are given to us by these foundations you know like the Rockefellers the Guggenheims on down the American Historical Association that's all them this is all them and they operate in a nonprofit manner manner uh, as if they are philanthropists, but they're just lining their pockets is what they're doing. Again, we, we are taxed time and time again, over and over again. Truly, we own nothing. They already own everything. It, it, this system has got to come to an end. And this is what we are, are, are seeing being unveiled in this. It's absolutely disgusting, and you know the re the reality is too that Gil Bates' character, uh, many believe he is a Rockefeller, and in fact that is the info that we get is that he is a Rockefeller. Absolutely, you know it's it's again through um, a hidden history and revising history. If he's controlling Microsoft and Windows, he's controlling most of the computer systems and operating systems and thus the educating systems here on Earth. And, you know, it's not too hard to have a team go ahead and eliminate any history of who he really is. And that's just the reality here. So, you know, again, when we talk about communism and communist uh, causes, that's a tool. Same thing with capitalism. It's a tool. All these things, all these systems are tools. That's nothing, they're nothing more than tools. In reality, what we have is is a slave system. It's an economic slave system. So I do want to encourage you guys to uh, listen to this if you can get a chance. Uh, you know, I usually listen to everything at one and a half times to get through it faster. Um, you know, but again, do do whatever you want to do. Um, we just wanted to give you this synopsis because, yeah, you know, they, they did some investigating. And, you know, it's interesting that you have this coming out at a time also when we were warned about the military industrial complex. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's all one system. And now at this point in time, as they're starting to lose a little more control of the narrative, this is when they will do what they've done in the past bring about another global war uh, this is just who they are so they they don't care about saving lives they only care about saving their own wealth and position and power i mean these are people who have access to information where there are rounds and rounds and rounds of civilizations rising and falling because they can understand how to manipulate the human mind and the human energy field to get what they want so they're tapping into what I believe is uh, information it's probably right there at the Vatican right underneath the Vatican on how to control a civilization so that you can maintain your power it's it's definitely there and the more people that know about this, the better, because they can, you know, stick their feet in the ground and say, no, I'm not going to go along with this system because it's a load of poop. Absolutely. You know, so again, we'll give you the links so you guys can look for yourself. But yeah, absolutely. Everything that we are fed is really a line of crap. And more and more people are waking up to this. So, you know, again, they foster concepts uh, like patriotism. They want you to be, you know, thinking that you live in the most blessed nation that ever existed because they created it, is the bottom line. They created uh, all these maps and boundaries. They're, they're always creating and recreating to suit their purpose. So, uh, you know, again, if you want to be patriotic, be a patriotic about life in general. 
and you know be patriotic for for consciousness exploring till its full um, prospects are are realized Mm -hmm. definitely there's ways to go about this where we can move in another direction but not not unless we really know the truth and we know which direction not to go in so if you're one of us and you kind of go against the grain of everything you're on the right track absolutely so you know they will bring about another war in order to create devastation and destruction to also eradicate evidence of of things that have happened previously that they're involved in and in order to bring people to their knees to where they will accept any solutions that are offered that's ultimately what they're doing so you know it's like that old video from the 80s um what was it war games or something where uh the computer was running um a simulation of a nuclear war and the only way you could win is not to play and that's again it if we if we get pulled in to where we are in this and we are taking a side then we lost because they want you to take a side uh, the the only way to win is not to play their games uh, it really it's to eliminate their mo- their monetary system to come up with alternatives that they can't become parasites that they are and leech off of so you know again things like barter and trade I, I do not believe cryptocurrency is a solution that's too easily controlled not easy enough to monitor um, I think things that need to be more tangible and again i think what we have to do is is to break things up into smaller parts uh because they they are not numerous uh in number not not anywhere near like us this is how the few control the many so make it impossible for the few to control the many by breaking up those parts uh, that they will try to control into as small a part pieces as possible and in fact again when you look to one of the definitions of anarchy it's no central government there should be no federal government anywhere on the planet there should be no federal governments period Mm -hmm. no i think we hold it within our ability to take it back to take the the power back take the control back if we if we're able to stand in our truth uh strong enough and long enough We'll get there. I mean, this guy, he they they offered him, you know, a really cush job for his entire life and a really, really nice retirement retirement if he just simply did not look into things and if he simply didn't worry about anything <laughs> and he couldn't do it. He, he resigned. So he's he's of, of that moral quality where he's just like, no, you know, I, I, I cannot do this and look at myself in the mirror day after day after day while I know things are going to crumble around my fellow humans and if every single one of us were that way and we didn't support the system the way the system needs it then we could get somewhere absolutely so as always guys thanks for your support we couldn't do it without your support um you know exclusive videos on patreon on a regular basis try to work towards creation of true freedom on this planet which is again not going to come with any of the systems that are given to us by these dark dark minions of truly uh this (laughs) the satanic adversary of this planet much love source bless look forward to your comments namaste namaste